We are going to start things off with the leaked benchmark for the Intel Arc A380 desktop. I do need to pull this up real quick. So one second. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Coming from WCCF Tech, leaked benchmarks for Intel Arc A380 desktop. Graphics spotted on par with NVIDIA's RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU, so not even a discrete GPU. With CES 2022 moments away, Twitter user Momo US revealed leaked specifications for the newest Intel Arc A380 desktop GPU. This new GPU is expected to be Intel's next discrete entry-level GPU, utilizing the XE HPG gaming architecture. Intel Arc A380, duh, they always do this. Let's move on. The post uh, from Momomo underscore US was only posted a few hours ago stating the model as well as the number of FP32 shading units, execution units, boost clock speed, memory allocation, and L2 cache. The Twitter user discovered this new information from benchmark tests on the CC software Sandra benchmarking software. It is now confirmed that the A380 discrete gaming GPU will offer new leaks from CISO, so, CISO, C software. Uh, appear to confirm that this desktop part will feature 1,024 FP32 shading units or 128 execution units. Website Video Cards further confirms that with this new leak, there will also be a weaker Arc Alchemist GPU, the A350, that will showcase a lesser DG2-128 EU discrete graphics card offering 96 execution units. Through the various benchmark tests using C software's tools, it provided that it proved, excuse me, that the Intel Arc A380 is more of what could be considered a entry level discrete GPU and could have the potential to reach as high as mid range performance levels. The leak also shows that the tests were run recently, processed only a few days ago, and it is unknown when the drivers were originally created. From the screenshot below, we can see that the Intel Arc A380 receives an average score of 2869.72 uh, megapixels a second in general purpose processing. This lands Intel's new graphics card between NVIDIA's RTX 3050 Ti and the RTX 3050 laptop graphics processor when talking about performance. Um, I can't even click on this, but let's go ahead and try to zoom in. So there you go. Uh, there's the ARC 380 and it looks like it is, I mean, yeah, I mean, not fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the memory information for us miners here, because I think that will be the most interesting piece of this. Um, all right, so, because this is a little hard to par parse through. So this is the A380, right? what we're talking about uh, up to six gigabytes of GDDR6 16 and 14 gigabits per second 96 bit bus uh, eh. um, what is that that probably equates to possibly RX 6600 mining performance or not because the what was the R RX 6600 bandwidth? RX 6600. Uh, 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 specifications, please. What was it again? Memory 14 gigabits per second across a 128 bit bus. So it's, it's not, I mean, yeah slower than the 6600 in mining more than likely uh, it does look like some of these higher end could be promising though the 256 bit bus up here the a580 having 128 bit bus with 60 to 80 watts but it says laptops so not desktops this says laptops this says laptops the only desktop ones we have right now is that a380 and the a330 um and then the performance is 
around laptop GPUs. Um, almost half the performance of the RX 6600. Uh, this better be a super budget GPU, essentially, I think at this point. I think that's probably what it's going to be, right? Uh, at this point, what we're looking at with the A380. So performance not looking that good, not looking that great. Uh, as far as the mining performance goes, we've already talked about it before. It doesn't look like it's going to be that great. Uh, we only have a 96-bit bus, and we are still using the old GDDR6 uh, memory. So eh, I'm not that excited about it. Let's go ahead and hop into the information for the RX 6500 XT, and this one's cool. So if you guys recall, we talked about the RX 6500 XT and the 6400 now going to be moving to six nanometer. And as a result, what that ends up translating into is a higher core clock. We'll talk about like the couple now. I, all right, so let's clarify some things. First of all, a majority of mining is focused on memory performance. That being said, there are a couple algorithms that do benefit from core. We'll talk about those. Uh, they do come with what I would call some downsides though. An example would be Flux, I believe Tawn, a Tawn coin, which also just recently one of their pools got hacked, unfortunately. But uh, these are examples of algorithms that do you know, favor core clock. So this could be relevant, especially with flux taking off as much as it has. The downside of core clock performance on a mining algorithm is going to be a couple things. Majority of is going to be heat dissipation off of that core and the power consumption being turned up over other algorithms. That's just the nature of the beast. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.